Father, we thank you. We glorify you in this space. God, you are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. And God, we thank you. We honor you in this time, in this space. Father, we thank you for your kindness, your goodness. God, we thank you, oh God, for being that watchful eye over our lives. God, we thank you for the answered prayers, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for the prayer list and the, the testimonies that have come in. Even today of our answered prayers, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God, that you're still a God who answers us when we pray. So we thank you, God. We glorify you. We give you honor and we give you praise. Bless our hearts, our minds to be receptive to your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. Always good to... See our prayer requests come across your emails. Everybody get emails with the prayer requests? Anybody not getting emails with the prayer requests? Everybody's getting it? 
Yeah, so it's great to hear, you know, sometimes something come across a prayer request, and then we hear the answer. That's about as good about getting updates. And so praise God for those prayer requests that were answered today. Amen. So we're excited about that. Turn your Bibles really quick to Mark chapter 10, and we're on lesson 11, the last lesson. And I want to give you a head start so you can start reading, meditating in First and Second Peter. We're going to look at the epistles of Peter, First and Second Peter, and do a book study. So when we leave this one, if not tonight, next week, our, our next Bible study will be a book study on uh, the first and second book of Peter. Amen? So we'll learn about Peter and the type of person he was as revealed to us in the Scriptures, and then we'll dig in into his writings verse by verse. Amen? Mark chapter 10. Today we're going to talk about the burden of service. We're still talking about our relationships, but today we're going to talk about the burden of service. And think about service as a critical component to the sustainability of viable relationships. Service. Amen. We're going to talk about why we should render service. Amen. Our first statement is oftentimes we, what, what is missing in our relationships is the commitment to the burden of service to those we're in a relationship with. Now, the reason I, I say that, that sometimes the uh, service is a burden because it's easier to serve people you get along with, you're having a good relationship where things are good. When things are difficult, and I think this entire lesson has prepared us for the difficulties uh, sometimes in our relationships, then service becomes a burden. Amen? Doing what you always did becomes a burden. Amen? Praise Jesus. I mean, when things were good, you did certain things. There were certain things that were expected of you. You had no problem fulfilling those expectations. Certain things you just automatically did. And then when things are tough, it's hard to serve. Amen? Hard to wash the car. It's hard to pick up the clothes. It's hard to do those things that we've always done. Now service becomes a burden. Matthew, I mean, Mark chapter 10. I want to start reading at verse 41. Mark chapter 10, you there? It says, when the 10 heard this, now uh, his, uh, James and John had come to Jesus and they had said to him, hey, when you get to glory, can we sit one on your right, one on your, on your left? And, and so we pick up the response of the disciples. When the 10 heard about this, they became indignant with James and John and Jesus called them, Together and says, you know how those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord their positions over them, and their higher officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, he must be your servant. And whosoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Amen? And gave his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus says, you want to be great, he says, then you got to take on the role of a servant. Praise Jesus. And, and the role that we have to take on as a servant is a nonstop. It's a full-time, all-the-time, lifetime position. Praise, praise the Lord. It's important because sometimes serving is hard. Serving strangers is hard, but it's even harder when you're trying to serve somebody you're in a relationship with, and the relationship is going through difficult times. So Jesus says that, that, that our position as servant, as slave, is what makes us great in the kingdom of heaven. So now I turn over to John 13, and we're going to look at this scripture for a minute. John 13, and our next statement says this. Jesus was our example of how we must carry the burden of service to one another. And, and we see this in John 13 because John 13, and it's the only book that records this, is about Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And he carried this burden of service to one another. And the service is to be rendered, the service that we carry one towards another is to be rendered. Now watch this, regardless of what position we hold in the relationship. It's to be rendered. Amen? So there's, there's no positions in the relationship 
that um, frees you of the responsibility to take the role of servant. Amen? We're all servants. And in our relationship, we're in a relationship with other people, and the primary goal or the primary purpose is to serve them. Whether we like them at the moment or not, serve them. Whether we're getting along fine or not, serve them. Whether they reciprocate or not, serve them. Amen? Now, what happens when we serve people and they don't serve us back? We serve people, they don't seem appreciated. We serve people and they don't do what they said they were going to do in response to the service. What happens? Huh? We get frustrated, right? We ready to stop serving them, right? What else? How do we feel? Huh? Hurt? What else? Disrespected? Rejected? What were you saying, sis? Don't listen. We ask him again. Say we're going to do better. It, anybody ever done that? Don't do better. He blessed us again. We're using him. But he continues to take that position. So let's read this text. John chapter 13. Look at verse 2. It says, well, I'm going to start with verse 4. It was, it, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time was coming for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were with, with, with him, who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. So this is, this is what the text is all about. Jesus is about to die. Now imagine knowing you about to die. I mean, you, 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 the doctor told you, you you got six months to live. You don't want to cook nobody's dinner no more. You don't want to make nobody's bed. You don't want to get nobody to ride. And I got six months to live. Everybody should be serving me. I'm the one about to get up out of here. And yet here Jesus is about to leave. And the last thing he wants to teach his disciples is how much he loves them. He wants to show them the extent of his love. So here he is in, one, in his most critical phase of life, his last days. And he said, I got, I got, I got, I got to get this last lesson in. I got, I got to make sure they know how much I love them. Verse 2. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already tempted or prompt Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Now, look at the context. It, it, Jesus is about to show his disciples the extent of his love. He's about to die. He, his life is coming to an end. He's about to make the, awesome, uh, the, the ultimate sacrifice. And, um, and Judas is at the table, and he's already got in his heart to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothes, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After he poured the water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now, he wasn't taking the towel off, putting the towel on, taking the towel off, putting the towel on, taking the towel off. He had took a big old towel, wrapped it around him, and then he's wiping their crusty, nasty feet. The evening meal had been served. So that means all day they've been walking around the dusty roads. And if you've ever been in a third world country, only the Americans are jumping over the poop. We're the ones looking down and trying not to step in stuff. The, the Africans are just walking. They kick something, they just kick it. Now imagine in ancient times you're walking around in sandals, same roads that the livestock are walking down. You can imagine at the end of the day, their feet were crusty and stinky and dirty. And this towel is wrapped around Jesus, and he's washing their feet, and with the towel wrapped around him, he's wiping it off. And he's doing this so he can show them how much he loves them. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said, 
You don't realize it now, what I'm doing, but later you'll understand it. No, 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 said Peter. Uh uh. Not me. Mm mm. You should never wash my feet. Jesus said, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Now, I want to think about something because this is interesting. Jesus is trying to show Peter how much he loves him by serving him. And here's what Peter says. Mm -mm. No, you, you can't love me that way. Now, I want to say this to, to those of us who have problems being served. Because Jesus came back with a sharp rebuke. This second time he had to tell Peter, this is one of those hellish-like rebukes. Satan, get thee behind me. I, he called Peter the devil himself when he said that. Now he's telling Peter, you ain't got no part with me. If you can't accept my service, you won't have no part with me. Because what I'm, what I'm doing when I serve you is showing you how much I love you. Now, this is important because we have a problem with service both ways. Hello. Hello. We, we have just as much problem being served as we have serving. So I just want to stop and point that out. Peter said, oh, no, you ain't washing my feet. Uh-uh, they too dirty? Oh, no, no. You can't be serving me like that. Jesus said, hey, you don't understand the full fullness of this revelation right now, Peter. Take the soft answer first. You don't understand the fullness of this revelation, Peter, but don't worry about it. You'll get it. Peter said, I don't care what it is. You ain't washing my feet. But then Jesus had to come back a little stronger. Well, if I can't serve you, you don't have no part with me. Amen? Y'all read that? Jesus answered, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, my hands, my head as well. And Jesus replied, a person who is bathed needs not, need only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. Slide reference to Judas. For he, for he, for he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one of you was, was clean. But don't worry about it because Judas is going to get the same service. He knew Judas would, would betray him, but he washed his feet. He knew Peter would deny him, but he washed his feet. He knew the other ten would run off and forsake him, but he washed their feet. He knew this. Judas is going to turn him over to be killed. And there he is on, on his knees, wiping his nasty feet, wearing the waist of his daily travels on a towel wrapped around him. He did that with each of the disciples, regardless of what he knew about them. Amen? Now watch this, watch this. When, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and he returned to his place. And he said, do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them, you call me Lord, teacher, and rightly so, for that is who I am. Now that, the, now that your Lord and your teacher have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, no master is greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. What a powerful lesson. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go to my grave. I'm about to, my life on earth is about to end. I want to teach you one final lesson, and here's how I'm going to teach you. I'm going to take off my robe. I'm going to put on a towel, and then I'm going to take the new garment that I'm wearing, and I'm going to use it to transfer the filth of your 
travels on to me. When Peter said, Lord, well, wash everything. He said, no, you're already clean. All of us are already clean, but you know what? Every day we step in something. And he said, hey, I'm just washing your feet. I'm, I'm washing away the residue of today. And then he said, now, I hope you understand what I've done because now this is what I need you to do for one another. Let's dig into this a little bit. Amen? You don't get to choose the circumstances in which you serve. I, I think this is another difficult conundrum we face in our walk with the Lord is that we want choice on certain things. We don't really get to choose who we're going to serve. I was with the girls in um, Louisville. We were over in St. Matthew Saturday, and um, we were over by Trader Joe's. We saw this guy who was obviously homeless. He was looking in the garbage cans for something to eat. And, and it, it always bothers me when I see homeless people on the side of the road. And it bothers me because, you know, we want to walk around the world and talk about we're the greatest country in the world, but we incarcerate more people than any other country. We incarcerate more kids than any other country. In fact, we're in violation of UN law. We are the leaders of the world, right? And yet we have people walking the street homeless, most of whom we know are mentally disabled. But as usual, I saw this man, I felt something in my heart. I didn't do anything. I'm driving on, on Shelbyville Road there. So then we take, I take the girls to Blaze Pizza. So we're sitting in Blaze Pizza, and I'm sitting there with the girls, and we, we ordered these pizzas. Everybody got their own personal pizza. And um, I'm about to sit down and eat, and I look up, and I see this guy again looking in garbage can. And again, I felt this thing in me. But I'm with my girls. And then it just wouldn't leave. So, so I felt like I didn't have a choice. So I walk and I lean over the door. I lean out the door. And I say, hey, man, you hungry? He said, yes, I am. I said, well, come on in, order pizza. I'll meet you at the register and we'll get you paid for it. And he's a very nice guy. He's very, just a very nice guy. And, uh, of course, the lady behind the counter started giving him some kind of response. I'm sure they see this guy all the time. And he's in one of the most wealthy neighborhoods in Louisville. And um, so he says, well, that guy over there says he's going to pay for my meal. So I can see him motioning towards me. So I get up and I go, I say, yes, give him whatever he wants. He says, well, well, I don't know. You paying for it. What should I get? I said, get whatever you want. I said, you like a lot of meat? Get the meat eaters. If you only want one topping, get one top. He said, well, I like a lot of meat. Well, get the meat eaters. Right? What do you want to drink? Oh, I'll just have water. Okay, get you some water. So then, I, of course, I took him. I went to the counter and I paid for it. He sat down, and he's so, so thankful, right? But I'm watching the people in the restaurant, and they're uncomfortable because he's the homeless guy, right? So he eats, and we're done eating. But I look over to Bree, and I said, we're not going anywhere until he leaves. I said, because I want to make sure he gets out of here safe, right? So Layla picked over her pizza, of course, and... Uh, so she's got like a whole pizza with a couple of the pepperonis picked off. And so now I box it up. And I say, hey, man, listen, here's, here's some pizza to go. Right? So I waited and walked him out, and he, he was able to eat. But, but, you know, the first time I saw him, I, I justified my choice. The second time I saw him, I, for a few minutes there, I justified my choice. There was a reason why... What, what I feel in my heart, I'm not going to act on because I'm with the girls. We're having a day out. He doesn't fit the scene and all these things. We, we don't get to choose when we serve, who we serve. Amen, somebody? And, and you know, you ever done that? You ever passed somebody and you felt like you should have did something, but you realized you didn't? 
And you, sometimes it, it bothers you for a while. Maybe it bothers you all the way home. Maybe you say to your mate or you say to one of the kids or you say to somebody you see, you know, I saw this person and I just felt like I should have did something, but I didn't. And that's because we think we have a choice. When God gives us an opportunity to serve, it's an opportunity to be great. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't anything for me. It didn't break me. The girl still had a nice time. I had to enjoy my peace, and he had a nice time. It was an opportunity to serve, and I almost missed the opportunity because of choice, right? And oftentimes, we can justify choice however we choose, amen? Service is made easy for us when the person we serve has been mindful of us. Service is easy to serve people who we feel serve us, benefit us. Amen? Meaning they have, they have been considerate of what we want or what we need, and so we reciprocate. Jesus chose to serve his disciples at one of his lowest moments in life. He chose to serve them. What a miracle. Your service to others must be based on their needs, not yours. So then when we think about service and when we think about service in our relationships, our service always has to be based on the need of those we serve, those we're in relationship with, not ours. It, it, now, it's hard to think about being committed to the burden of service with the possibility of nothing in return, isn't it? I mean, to think about serving somebody over and over and over again and never get anything in return. I mean, even the baby shows you affection and love, smile at you once in a while. But imagine serving somebody and you don't get anything in return. Service always has to be based on the needs of those that God put you in connection with and not your own needs. Amen? It's tough, though, isn't it? Praise Jesus. Jesus chose to serve his disciples at his weakest point. Your service must be based on their needs, not yours, and comfort. Can't be based on your need. Can't be based on the fact that it's convenient for you. It's going to make life better for you. Because sometimes we'll, we'll serve people for our own good. Amen? I, I, sometimes we do service to get service. It's really based on my need and my comfort. But if I do this, I'm more likely to get my need met or be comforted. But it can't be based on our, our need and our comfort. Amen? This will require you to become other-focused and not self-focused, which, again, is an ongoing battle to be focused on something other than ourselves. Amen? Amen? So your service then must not be on the basis of someone's worthiness. If, 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 you're, if you're looking for a justification to serve a person or not, then you've already got the wrong reason. If you did it for me because you counted me worthy and you didn't do it for somebody else because you counted them unworthy, neither one passes the litmus test in the eyes of God. You did it for the wrong reason. Amen? Can't be on what you think is someone's worthiness. It has to be based on their need. And listen, we, we can't ignore when, when God shows us needs. You know what I'm saying? Because here's the thing. God will show you need that physically you don't see. And, but you know God's showing you need. But you're going to justify it because I ain't see it. Well, I ain't know nothing. Yeah, but you know God laid something on your heart. Ever done that where God just prompts you to say something, do something, be somewhere, take somebody somewhere, go see somebody, and you had no revelation of a need, but you knew God was showing you something. God was telling you something. But sometimes we just... Hard to get beyond ourselves. Amen? 
Our service to those who are, we are in relationship with must be prompted by the merits of their actions. It must not be, I'm sorry, must not be prompted by the merits of their actions or their behaviors towards us. That's hard. This basically says, no matter how they treat you, has nothing to do with your level or quality of service. Now, now, now saints, that's ministry. Because we minister no matter what. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Bless, God bless the souls of, 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 of Val, Tiffany, and Pastor Angie to do food pantry. Food pantry frustrates the heck out of me. Because I'd be, I be looking at people's cars, their fingernails, their hairdos. I, I just be, I be struggling. You're going to pull up in a Mercedes talking about give me some food. No, I do. I be struggling. Because, again, because I'm into me. I'm not necessarily into the opportunity to serve. I get frustrated sometimes. I've had conversations with people. Hey, we, we open other days of the week. Can't you come in here one Sunday and just stand in the back and say, Lord, thank you? It's like, I'm going I'm to give you something, but you better come to church. I'm just being honest. Y'all act like y'all don't ever give something and then get mad because you don't get what you think you enjoy. I, it's like, how dare you come to the church? People come to the church for stuff, and they, they expect that we must do it because that's the idea they got in the world. Oh, go to church. They, they, the church will give you something. The church will do this. The church will do that. And sometimes I just get into self, and I'll be like, no, these are our resources, not y'all's. Yeah, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. I don't know. Maybe they do have a Mercedes, but no food in the house. It's possible. Right? And they come in and they're asking for food. I'm just, I got to give based on the appearance of a need. I'm only trying to justify it because I'm struggling to do it. I think I have a choice. I don't think they merit what they're asking. We've all had the, these same struggles. Sometimes for us, it's with people we know, so we know what they have or have not done. Amen? Praise Jesus. It's hard sometimes. Jesus knew Judas would betray him. He knew Peter would deny him. He even knew the other disciples would abandon him, yet he served them because of their need. They all had dirty feet. He saw a need. He served them based on that need. Amen? You know, it's very tempting to evaluate whether or not someone deserves our service or if they even appreciate our service to them. But what the Lord requires is that we seek to serve one another, period. Very easy for us to evaluate whether they deserve it. And I find myself doing this sometimes. People come to the church asking for stuff. And it's, it's not even because we don't have the food to give because I'm focusing on what I think or what I feel at the moment. Jesus said, just serve. I don't want you to evaluate nothing. I don't want you to quantify nothing. I don't even want you to get into your own feelings. Maybe they are using you, but serve. Don't think about what they're doing with it. Don't think about it. I remember one time we, we went to a guy's house that we had been giving food to and because uh, we, we were renting a apartments out in that building, the church was. We were using some of them for our housing program, so we had to um, oversight the whole building. And we went to this one guy's house who had been coming to our food pantry, and he had canned goods under the table, food everywhere. He had more food than he could ever eat in a lifetime. He had been to every food pantry, hoarding food, and roaches were running crazy. And when you see stuff like this, you start judging people 
whether or not they merit what they're asking for. One, it just takes one bad apple to cause you to lump everybody in the same category. And the Lord says, no, 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 no. Don't, don't you judge them. Just serve them. Don't you evaluate the merit of their request. Just serve them. Amen? And it's tough. Serving on the basis of another person's need and not their worthiness puts you in a very vulnerable position. Puts you in a position to be dis- disappointed, puts you in a position to even be hurt, disrespected like we all said, used, right? The choice not to serve puts you in a position to disappoint the Lord and to mishandle the persons he's allowed to be you to be in relationship with. Also causes you to mishandle the people he calls you to be in relationship with. Amen? So if I, serve, if I don't serve them, I'm disappointing God. And I could be guilty of mishandling the person he put me in the relationship with. Amen? Service. See why I call it the burden of service? When we choose not to serve in a relationship, what happens is we most often become cold, careful, protective of our own interests. We shut down. And we do it because we say, I'm protecting my heart. You know how we do protecting me. But when we shut down and we know God has put somebody in our lives to be a blessing to and we shut down, all that happens is we start to get cold and callous. Amen? Let's go over to Romans chapter 5. You know, Scripture says in Jeremiah, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, God continues to serve us all our lives, don't he? But God demonstrated his love, his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The ultimate service is to lay down your life. Now, he had not I don't think he's going to make any of us literally lay down our lives. But he did give us kind of an illustration when he says, if you come out to me, you got to do what? Deny yourself and take up what? Your cross. So he tells us that to do his will, sometimes it's going to be painful. And he says the pain is going to feel like a cross. Because I don't want to do this. He says, take up that cross. Deny yourself. Take up that cross. Amen? Position doesn't exempt anyone from service. Doesn't matter what your position is. Doesn't exempt you from service. General, colonel, father, mother, minister, pastor. Doesn't matter what your position is in life. Doesn't exempt you from the opportunity God gives you to serve especially those he's brought you into relationship with. Doesn't give you a right to not serve. No matter how high you are, you still have to come low enough to serve those that God has put you in relationship with. Jesus, knowing it was time for him to die, took off his outer garments, put on a towel, got on his knees, washed his disciples' feet. And this is his last lesson to them. This is how I'm going to show you how much I love you. Because I'm going to serve you. Amen? And then he says, if you call me Lord and teacher, and you're right, that's who I am. So if I was able to get on my feet and wash your feet, then you should do this to one another. But I want you to think about all the times you struggle to serve. You just deny a kindness to somebody. Amen. Praise Jesus. Let's go to John chapter uh, 13. 
And let's look at verse 3 again. So to serve the way Jesus served must be secure in who we are. Amen? And realize that humbling ourselves and serving people doesn't change who we are. It doesn't change our value in the relationship. It doesn't change our significance in the relationship. It doesn't change anything. You're going to still be who God put you in that relationship to be. Here's what he says in John 13, verse 3. He says, let me get to it. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Got up, took off his outer garment, wrapped himself in a towel, and washed his disciples' feet, knowing that he had come from the Father knowing he was the son of God. And he's going to be the son of God after he get up off the floor. He's still going to be God's beloved son when he gets up off the floor, wrapped in that, that towel full of filth. Doesn't change who he is. And it doesn't change what the disciples may have thought of him. Obviously, Peter thought ill of him because Peter said, there's no way you're washing my feet. But Jesus, knowing who he was, where he came from, and where he was going, he says, hey, this ain't going to change a thing. Them using you, them disrespecting you, them not showing you honor, whatever you say when people do you wrong, he says, serve them, because it's not going to change anything. Why is that so real for us? Why is what we feel when people don't respond to our kindness and our, 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 our acts of, of service to them, why is that so strong? Why is that so strong? Because Jesus seemed to have done it so easy. Like, I know who I am. I know where I came from. This is not going to change who I am. Why is that so hard for us? Like, I can't keep doing this. This joker using me. I can't keep doing this. They don't care. I can't. Why is it so hard for us to just realize, hey, I am who I am by the grace of God? It just hasn't changed anything. Thank God I got it to keep giving over and over and over again. We like recognition. Yeah. Somehow we feel like there should be something coming back to us. And when it doesn't happen over and over and over again, we start to feel used, disrespected, disregarded. That's why it's a burden. But you got to do it. Amen? But you got to do it knowing who you are. It's not going to change. The, the, it's, it's not gonna, the, what, the disrespect is not going to change who you are. The fact that they didn't reciprocate is not going to change. I can't believe they didn't even say thank you. How many times you said that about somebody? Yeah. I can't believe they didn't even say thank you. I ain't doing that no more. So then the Lord gives you an opportunity to do it again, and you don't do it. You think you're getting back at them, but really the Lord is saying, you dishonored me because I gave you what you needed to be able to serve them. Then I gave you another opportunity to serve them, but we were in ourselves. And sometimes it's, it's just because they didn't say thank you. Tough. That burden of service is tough, isn't it? To do it, it will take tremendous humility and self-denial to render service to someone when you're not in the when you're in a position that is superior to them. Let's go to John chapter 4. Eventually, it'll take great humility and self-denial, especially when you're in a position that is superior to somebody. And that's, if, if, if they have a need and you have the ability to meet that need, then you're in the superior position. And you refuse to meet that need, it's because you're refusing to humble yourself. Amen? All right, let's look at 
James chapter 4. I want you to look at verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Come near to God and he'll come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your gloom and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Who? Who's doing the lifting? The Lord. He'll lift you up. You, you keep expecting the person you served to somehow bring some accreditation to you. You keep looking for the person you serve to bring some level of validation to you. You want to serve them and hear them go, oh, you're so great. Oh, thank you. There's none like you. Oh, I can't wait to testify. I'm going to tell the whole church how you blessed me. And God said, no. I'm going to do the lifting. You do the humbling. Humble yourself. He says, humble yourself, and God will lift you up. That's the validation you want. You, the only person you want to hear say, well done. So he says, let go of the validation. Let go of this, this idea that somebody, somehow or another, you're going to give to them, and they're going to say something, do something, respond in a way that's going to give you this warm fuzzy. No, get the warm fuzzy from God. But they just turn and walk away and don't say a thing. Humble yourself. Because God said, the validation you want, it comes from me. In Matthew, he says, listen, do your good deeds in secret. In fact, don't even let your right hand know what the left hand is doing. Don't be like the Pharisees and doing it in the public so everybody can see it. He said, hey, just, just do it. And when it's time to lift you up, I'll lift you up. But we've, we've been accustomed to, to getting some kind of positive response from the person we served. And God said, no, 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 no. I'll lift you up in due season. Amen? Humble yourself before the Lord, and he'll lift you up. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. And when you judge the law, you are not keeping it but sitting in judgment on it. Therefore, only one lawgiver and one judge, one who is able to save and destroy. But you are, but who are you to judge your neighbor? I'm nobody. I had an opportunity to serve. I served. Praise Jesus. You know, I always, I always, when I struggle to serve, I, there's a scripture that, that often brings me back to that center place. And it's out of Acts where the Lord said it's most, more blessed to give than to receive. And then I think about that. When a person asks you for something, they, they need to receive. And if you have an opportunity to give, then the Lord said, it's more blessed. In this relationship of exchange, the blessed place to be is the person who's giving than to be the person who's in that place of need. So when I struggle sometimes with giving, I remind myself, God, thank you for having it to give. Right? Because it more, it's more blessed to give than receive. But it is a burden, especially in the context of our relationships. It's a burden. Amen? But we got to bury that burden. We got to bear that burden. We got to carry that burden. Yes, ma'am. Huh? What did I skip? I'm sorry. When you choose not to serve in a relationship? Oh, it's very tempting to evaluate whether they deserve your service or if they would uh, even appreciate the service you give to them. But the Lord requires that you seek to serve one another. The Lord requires that you seek to serve one another. Mm hmm Amen. 
So do those tough things. Amen? Do those tough things. And remember, the validation you see comes from God. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you in this space. Thank you, O oh God, for the blessing to be able to be a blessing. Thank you, God, that we are heirs of Abraham's promise. His promise was he would make him a blessing. You would bless him so that he would be a blessing. And, God, we thank you that in whatever way you bless us to be a help to one another, that we would be a help to one another, that we would serve one another. God, we thank you that you, our Lord, and our, our teacher, our master, our Savior, has served us in so many ways. And, God, you said that we should follow that example and serve one another. So help us, Lord God, to bear the burden of service. We thank you and we glorify you. We give you honor and we give you praise. May your grace and the sweet communion of your spirit rest upon us, hence now and forevermore. Let everyone say amen. Don't forget about Good Friday service, 12 noon here on Friday. God bless you. You're dismissed. Love on somebody before you leave. <laughs>